Hey everybody, this is Axel from Thinking Right Center back again with another top 10 video. This time we are doing first base and I can already tell that some of you are probably going to be pretty pissed at me, specifically the Cardinals fans, sorry guys, but I did come up with a better criteria for how I do these top 10 rankings. So basically it's just if they're all making the same amount of money, who would I want on my team for the year 2024? That's it. I feel as if it balances out ceiling and floor pretty well if I do it by that criteria. And so that's what I went with. And another thing, FRV stands for fielding run value. It's just a quick and simple number to discern defensive value. But without further ado, let's just get into the video. Starting this one off with a spicy take with Vinny Pasquantino of the Kansas City Royals at number 10. I know you're looking at the stats and telling me that I'm an idiot, but hear me out. First of all, they only played 61 games before a torn labrum sidelined him for the rest of the season. Secondly, his expected stats were much higher than the stats he put up due to a shorter sample size. His expected batting average was 282, and the expected slug was 454. But that's not why I put him on the list. He's on the list because he has no problem lifting the baseball, is capable of producing similar exit velocities to Freddie Freeman, strikes out at a similar rate to Alex Bregman, makes contact in the zone at a similar rate to DJ LeMahieu, and walks at a well above league average. His profile is exceptional. There's not many players who have that combination of impact, hit tool, and patience, and those that do are elite, which is what I expect Pasquantino to be. I understand that it's aggressive to put him in the top 10, and I know that people are going to be mad at me, but I'm a huge believer in the Pasquatch, and that's why he's at number 10. The former MVP Paul Goldschmidt of the St. Louis Cardinals finds himself at number 9. I think Goldie is going to be a Hall of Famer, but he's not getting any younger at age 36, and there's some serious red flags in his game. He's still going to be very good, hence why he's still number nine, but he really struggled with four seamers last season, a pitch he used to absolutely abuse in his prime. Even as little as two years ago, he was hammering that pitch, but bat speed is often the first thing to go with old age, and pitchers aren't going to start throwing slower anytime soon. But don't get it twisted. Goldie can still really play. I just think the days of him hitting around 300 with gold glove level play at first base are essentially over. That doesn't mean he's not going to hit 25 to 30 homers, because when he gets them, my God, he really gets them, as you can see in some of these background clips. And he's still going to walk at almost a 13% clip. That in itself means he's still in the top 10, but this is as high as I can put him given the age concerns and just how loaded this position is in general. Coming in at number 8 is one of the most hyped prospects I can remember in Vladimir Guerrero Jr. of the Toronto Blue Jays. I think we just witnessed the worst statistical season that Vlad Jr. will put up for a very long time. To put it simply, he was one of the most unlucky players in baseball this past season, and that level of unlucky simply can't sustain itself. In the past, the big concern with Vlad Jr. was his ground ball rate. In 2021, the year he hit 48 home runs, his ground ball rate was 44.8%. In 2022, it ballooned back up to 52%, which is much too high for a guy who impacts the baseball as hard as Vlad Jr. You'd expect last season, with his lackluster stats, to have a similar ground ball rate to 2022. But you would be wrong, as it was only 46.2%, an increase of only 1.4% from his monster season in 2021. He had a career-low strikeout rate this past season, and still hits the ball just as hard as anybody. And he's still just 25 years old. I wouldn't be surprised if he returns to something similar to his 2021 form. The only reason I don't have him higher is because he's bordering on the edge of being a full-time DH due to his horrid defense. And I do need to see some more production before I shoot him up further in the list, but for now, Number eight will do. Coming in at number seven is my sunbathing king, Tristan Casas of the Boston Red Sox. Casas is coming off a monster rookie season, but it didn't start out that way. On June 12th, Casas went 0 for 4 to drop his season batting average to 197 with an OPS of 683. From that point on, Casas hit 313 with a 405 on base percentage and an OPS of 986. Do I expect Casas to hit 300? No. But what you can expect for him is to hit home runs and walk at an elite rate as last year he walked 13.9% of the time, which is good for 93rd percentile in the league. His 24 home runs from last season will almost assuredly turn into 30-plus this next season, with the upside for 40. The glove was bad last season, but many believe there's room to improve, and I'm willing to give him another season just to see how it looks. But honestly, it doesn't matter too much, as it's hard to find many 24-year-olds with a floor and a ceiling as high as Casas. I expect Casas to keep building off a great rookie season to become a premier first baseman in the league which is why he finds himself at number seven. Just narrowly edging out the previous two players for number six on the list is Christian Walker of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Walker was a huge part in why the D-backs got as far as they did, but when I started making this list, I didn't think Walker was going to end up being this high. But here we are. 
The veteran of the D-backs has really seemed to figure something out since turning 31, as over the past two seasons, he has averaged a 4-F4 and has hit 69 home runs. Nice. I don't usually care too much about defense over at first base, but when you are far and away the best defender at the position, it definitely has to count for something, which is why he got the edge over some of the other guys on the list. The ceiling isn't quite as high with the bat as maybe some other first baseman, but there's always something nice about knowing pretty much exactly what you're going to get. With Christian Walker, you're going to get a 120 to 125 WRC+, 30 to 35 home runs, and a gold glove. And when you put it that way, it was hard to drop him any lower than six. Polar Bear Pete Alonzo of the New York Metropolitans is coming in at number five. This is where first base starts to get crazy, as everyone in the top five are some of the best players in the sport. Alonzo is one of the best power bats in all of baseball, as he hits 45 home runs per 162 games played to this point in his career. His 121 WRC plus this past season was the lowest he's put up in a full season. However, much like Vlad Jr., Alonzo was unlucky this season which led to an uncharacteristically low 217 batting average. Even so, he hit 46 home runs and drove in 118. The batting average is going to be higher next season, in the 240 to 250 range, if I were to predict. And when that number rises, so will the rest of his numbers, which will lead to an OPS closer to 900 than it is 800. He's honestly improved a lot at first base, but the value is still coming from the bat, as he's not getting invited to a track meet anytime soon. However, you could make the case that Alonzo is the best home run hitter in the sport, and to me, he's an underrated contact hitter as well, as he's really cut down the strikeout rate since his rookie season. I think Alonzo may be due for a monster season, and it almost pains me to have him this low at number five. Yandy Diaz of the Tampa Bay Rays is coming in at number four. I think we all understand how good Yandy is, but I still think he might just be underrated. Yandy Diaz had a 164 WRC plus this past season, which was good for the fifth best mark in all of baseball. He was sandwiched right between Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman. You ever heard of those guys? He was a great hitter in 2022, but the power took a big step up this past season as he hit 22 homers compared to the nine he hit in the previous season. He's a bit in the older side for a breakout season, but it looks as if the breakout has happened. Him and his big muscles hit the ball extremely hard, and he hits it that hard very often. And it appears as if last season he learned how to lift more consistently, which led to more home runs. He hit 330 this season. He will probably not hit for that high an average again, but 300 is seemingly almost a guarantee. He walks at an 11% rate, doesn't strike out much. He's simply a great hitter who's been hitting for quite a while now. Can he do anything else on the baseball field? No, he certainly can. But when you hit like Yandy does, you can get away with it. And if it weren't for a ridiculous top three at this position, I'd put him much higher, but you're about to see why I couldn't. The baddest man in baseball, Bryce Harper, is number three at his new position. Harper is officially making the transition to full-time first base and is immediately in the top three. Harper came back from offseason Tommy John way sooner than anyone expected and made his debut on May 2nd. It took him a while to get his power back, which makes sense, considering he was playing with one goddamn elbow. He only hit three home runs in the first half with an OPS of 786, but after the All-Star break, this man was back. As in 70 games, he hit 296 with a 413 on base and slugged 583 for an OPS of 996 while hitting 18 home runs in the process. Even with the slow start, Harper put up a 142 WRC plus for the season, but the second half stats is what Bryce Harper really is, and I'm super excited to see the numbers he puts up in his first full healthy season since 2021 when he won the MVP. He's a great athlete and obviously had some hiccups at first base when he first got there, but by the end of the season, I actually thought he looked great. I think he could be a plus defender over there. Harper is everything he was billed out to be as a 16-year-old and more, and if he's the best first baseman in the league by the end of the season, is anyone really surprised? Matt Olson is the next Atlanta Brave to be on one of these top 10 lists at number two. He hit 54 home runs this past season. I honestly could just say that and move on to the next guy and you don't understand why he's this high. But I guess I'll talk more. It was his second season as a Brave and it was the classic case of getting used to things your first year in a new place and then exploding in the second year. He didn't have a month where he slugged under 500. He put up a 160 WRC+. plus. He walked 14% of the time. He's the perfect stereotypical first baseman. Just a giant mountain man who pummels baseballs into oblivion. He knows exactly what he's doing up there. He's going to get his pitch, and when he does, he's not going to miss it. And if he doesn't get it, he'll pass the baton to the next guy. Olsen has also played 162 games in each of the past two seasons, something not many players can say anymore, which certainly adds a great deal of value. I wouldn't be shocked if he did, but I wouldn't expect him to hit 280 again, nor would I expect him to hit 50-plus homers. But what you can expect is 40-ish homers and an above 900 OPS. And with all the protection he gets in that potent Braves lineup, who knows, 
maybe he'll just start hitting 50 every year. To absolutely nobody's surprise, Freddie Freeman of the Los Angeles Dodgers is the best first baseman in the league. This man is aging like the finest of fine wines, as he's coming off his best season yet at age 33. Over the past two seasons, he has averaged a 7.5 F4, 25 home runs, hit well above 300, and has an OPS of 948 and a WRC Plus of 159. You want to talk about a flawless hitter, then just go ahead and look at Freddie Freeman. He's like an AI language model. He'll swing at a pitch he shouldn't have, and it's almost like his brain will go, okay, I'm never going to swing at that pitch ever again. It's incredible. On top of all the flawless hitting, Freddie just seems to do all the little things right to extract every last inch of value out of his game. He plays above average defense at first base and has decided to add stealing bases to his tool belt as he stole 23 last season. At this rate, Freddie Freeman is just going to end up being the Tom Brady of baseball as he somehow just keeps getting better. And as he breaks records and hits milestones, we'll just have to sit back and enjoy as the best first baseman of this era will just continue to do his thing at number one. And there it is, guys. That is the top 10 first baseman in all of baseball right there. If you hated the video, make sure to leave a hate comment below. Tell me I'm an idiot. Tell me that I'm ugly. Dislike the video if you'd like. Or maybe if you like the video, you could like it for me and you know tell me that I'm pretty in the comments or tell me I'm a genius. One of the two. Whatever you guys want to do. Just interact with the video for me, please. And stay tuned for the second base video coming out. And thank you, guys. I appreciate it.